All right, everybody. Hey, let's give you a 60 second uh, notice. If we could take our seats and you know get ready, uh, we'll get started in about 60 seconds. Give everybody in each room time to do that. Um, if all the people that are in the rooms that, that that are running the rooms, if you could give me a thumbs up, if you can see my screen and you can hear us okay, and then we'll get started at, uh, in about uh, 60 seconds. Let me know that everything's working. You can see a screen. If you're watching this virtually and you're not in a live room, maybe put, uh, you know, give me a hands up or make a comment in the chat box that you can see it and you can hear us okay. So, um, Joseph, can you hear me okay? Sound great to me, Bob. How am I sounding? You're good. So we'll get everybody started. We'll give them about 30 more seconds. And this way we can get into our seats. <clears throat> if you're having lunch before you watch this, uh, grab all your food and, and we'll get started on time. All right, so looks like we've got uh, our, our one minute in. So let's get started. Well, first, folks, thanks for being here today. We really appreciate you taking the time. So, you know, when we do classes like this, we feel the responsibility to deliver content that is powerful and, quite honestly, you haven't seen anywhere else. And so you'll understand our mentality a little bit when we're done. But today's topic is the perfect listing presentation. Well, what makes a listing presentation perfect? Well, it's structuring it in such a way and being able to provide enough services and value to the consumer that it's almost impossible to say no, right? We'll never get 100%, but they'd have to be crazy not to work with you today. So we're going to go through the actual listing presentation. I'm going to give you some things to think about, right? So anytime I talk about listings, or really anytime I talk about production, it's imperative that we understand that the way real estate works, and it's worked like this for decades, that the salesperson that controls listing inventory will generate the most amount of income. So if you want to make a lot of money, you need to specialize in the listing arena. You know, this is from Tom Hopkins, probably from the 70s. Well, guys, guess what? It was true before the 70s and has been true every ever since. And so today we're going we're gonna to focus on that. And if you have any doubt that it's true, even though this book is about 20 years old now, what Gary Keller did when he wrote this back in 1999, he went and interviewed the top 50 agents in the United States. And what he was looking for was commonality. And the one thing that he found that every top producer, right, the top 50 agents in the United States, and they all agreed to talk to him, the one thing they all had in common is that they were listing agents and they were focused on listing agents. And then they had agents to work with the buyers instead of them. So guys, we don't need to reinvent the real estate wheel. We just need to understand these are the rules of the game. One of the things that, that you know, I always question is why are agents always chasing all these buyer leads and Zillow leads and everything else? When if we simply had listings, everything else would take care of itself. The buyers will come to you. That's the cool part. And especially in today's environment, right? Now, typically there's eight targets that we teach our team to focus on, you know, it's, and you can see them on the screen. Today's class is not about the details of how you target them, what you say. This is about the presentation itself, right? So here's what we're going to cover. Number one, how to get sellers to say yes to listing with you, right? This isn't about practicing and going into people's houses. This is about getting signatures on pieces of paper. Then we're going to talk about how you crush discount brokers. Because, well, that's a big thing in our in our world today, right? And then how you crush iBuyers. Oop, got that in the wrong order. How you get hundreds of buyers to an open house generating dozens of pre-approved buyer leads. Guys, if I can get hundreds of people to come into my open houses, why would I need to spend any money on Zillow or any of that? And then we're going to talk about how you leverage your listings to maximize your cash flow. So that's what we're going to get covered on today's class. And then we're going to talk about how you can implement this presentation and the tools and systems that we talk about and how you can do it very, very quickly, right? So that's what we're going to cover for you today. So do me a favor, please invest the time in your business. Um, if you're, you know, in a room, turn off your emails, don't text, don't be checking your phone, all that stuff. If you're watching it virtually, turn off the phone, close your door, all that stuff. Invest probably hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes on understanding your business better. Education is the one thing that you can do that will keep paying you over and over again. And so just invest the 90 minutes that it'll take for us to go through this today, okay? So I'm off my soapbox. So here's the question I have for you. I always call it the million-dollar question. Why should a seller hire you? 
instead of a relative who's got a real estate license. I'm in the state of Arizona. One in every six residents is a licensed real estate agent. Oh, no, no, no. My brother-in-law is going to do it for me for free. What do you say to that? What about the mega agents, the people that are all over the TVs, the billboards, the radio? Do you guys know that Quicken is in the real estate business? I'm going to share some information with you on, on that in a few minutes. What about all the discount brokers coming into the market, the Rex, the homies? Uh, I just talked to somebody yesterday in Denver. There's another one that's come in. How do you do, you know, what do you say to that? How about Zillow Open Door Offer Pad? And if you go, hey, I'm in a smaller market. Um, I don't have those guys. Um, I promise you guys, just Google um, cash offers in Wichita. You'll find over 2 million responses to that. And then, well, what about Amazon? Do you guys know the Amazon's in the real estate business? So I'm going to walk through some of that. But here's the question. They going to do it. Uh, my brother-in-law is going to do it. And he's not going to charge me a commission. What do you say to that, guys? Or I'm going to have uh, XYZ broker do it. You know, he sells 600 homes a year. Or I can use Rex or Homie for 2,500 bucks and save all the commission. Or I'm going to just sell to Zillow, Open Door, Offer Pad, all those guys. Do you have an answer for that? And if you don't, that's what today's class is about, the million-dollar question. How do you answer that? How do you have a comeback to all those things? And as we go through our listing presentation today, you're going to see and understand how we're able to answer that, okay? Because my challenge for you today, guys, is to start thinking outside the box. Average real estate agent makes about 40000 bucks a year, and it's been like that for decades. If you want to be average, keep doing what everybody tells you to do. Keep going to the same broker training. Right, you're going to, to to listen to brokers who haven't sold in ten years. And they don't even know what digital marketing is. My challenge for you is to get outside the box today and start to think different. Okay, because here's the thing, guys: agents don't like change. People in general don't like change. Here's the downside: you'll like being irrelevant a heck of a lot less. And so the thing for you to understand is you're going to have to change before you have to. I guess you don't have to. You could just leave the business. But real estate right now is changing at warp speed. All these discounters, all these eye buyers, all the TV commercials, you see, oh, no, the whole world's technology is changing the real estate transaction. Here's the good news, guys. No, it's not. It may change how they find it, but it's not changing the real estate business. So you've got to change and adapt. And so you're going to have to get outside the box and leave your comfort zone. So who am I and why should you even consider listening to me? My name is Bob Mangold. I've been a real estate agent. I'm sorry, I've been a lender for 28 years, 23 years as a top producing realtor. I developed a multi-million dollar a year system, not multi-million in production, multi-million in cash flow, generating leads and converting them, speaking at a monthly seminar. I worked one day a month. I owned my own company for nine years. I built the fastest growing exit realty franchise in their history. And now I coach agents to build their personal net worth by taking more listings, building buyer teams to handle the enormous amount of leads they generate, and create referral fee payments in excess of 100 every month. I have a 538 agent team in 36 states and three provinces of Canada. It's kind of what we do. And so we're in the trenches every day with you. I'm pleased to tell you I'm joined, joined by Joseph Limo, one of our agents out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. Joseph, I'm going to let you give a background. But the reason that I invited Joseph to this call, folks, I've been doing this a long time, and here's what I'm going to tell you. He has the best listing presentation I have ever seen. He's got a great demeanor in delivering it, and it's very strategic and well thought out. So, Joseph, welcome. First of all, thank you. Honored. Uh, those are some of the kindest words from someone who has not only earned my respect and trust, but completely changed my real estate business and my personal uh, income and wealth. So, Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, yeah I, I'm Joseph. I've been a real estate professional here in Southern California for uh, over 15 years. I am a broker, uh, car certified forms trainer. I've been fortunate enough to be a national trainer for a large uh, real estate company in the past. Uh, but let's just put it this way. Like I've, I started real estate when we were order takers. I've seen it all the way through the crash and uh, found myself, you know, in all those different dynamics, understanding how to make adaptations and position myself correctly for change. And this listing presentation is really the summation of all that I've learned from the beginning of my real estate career and then a lot implemented from my uh, opportunities to work directly with Bob. So I'm glad to be here, Bob. Thank you. And, and how big is your team? 
280, almost 290 agents in 15 states now. And that's over, what, a two and a half year period that I've been fortunate enough to work with you. That, yep, two, about, about, about that long. So, yep. so folks, we're going to cover a lot of ground with you today. Um, Joseph's going to walk through exactly what he does in a house. But remember I told you one of the things that we wanted to cover today is how you leverage your listings, right? And so to me, it's important that real estate agents understand that because if I'm you know, live in a room full of people or if I'm doing consulting work or whatever it might be, I always ask people, hey, how much on average do you make on your listings? And they'll go, oh, I get 3%, and you know, it depends on the price. So in Joseph's market, a half a million dollar home is starting price, right? Yep. So Joseph, this open house, you did a two-day open house, right? Oh, we did, Saturday and Sunday. And roughly, was it 158 people that came through? 250 over the course of the two days. Okay, so 250 people came in. How many buyers did you get pre-approved from that open house? Over the course of the two days, literally on the spot, 19 buyers uh, over that time. And then how many people came in and said, hey, we want you to list our house from the neighborhood or had a house to sell or whatever it was that you'll take those listings? Yeah, we, we got six listing appointments in that same two-day period. So 25 people, folks. Now, the listings he's going to get, but let's even, let's, I want to be as conservative as I can. Let's say out of the 25, he only gets 12 that he actually closes transactions with. And I'm going to use a half a million dollar price point because the math is easy. So he closes 12 transactions at 15000 That's $180,000, right? $180,000 from one listing. And that does not include the listing. So there's another 15000 in there. It's actually a little bit more because it was about a $600,000 sales. So just call it 15. So there's $195,000 that Joseph made from one listing. So here's how I calculate math, and this is what I teach all agents to do. If Joseph wants to make $2 million a year in GCI, how many listings does he need? A little bit more than 10. And so what happens is we complicate the real estate business by thinking in a different way. You know, somebody else will say, okay, we'll take your 15,000 and you want to make a, a million and a half. So you need to have a hundred listings. No, we have to take and be strategic about these listings and leverage them in a way to turn your traffic into buyers so that you're not buying Zillow leads or anything else. I mean, Joseph, how much do you spend every month on say Zillow leads or realtor.com or any of those? Zero. The only ad spend that I have is going to be on my own listings. Uh, but I have no ad spend for leads. They're, they're all driven from my own production. And so that's what we refer to, folks, about leveraging your listings to build that income. We just have to be more strategic. And unfortunately, I don't know of anybody in the real estate business teaching agents to think like that. When we do business planning, right? So Joseph does a lot of our business planning with some of our new agents. Like, that's how we teach them to think. Because suddenly, like, if you start thinking about making $2 million a year to go out and take 10 listings a year, suddenly it doesn't seem so hard, does it? And that's what, that's what we're doing. So that's what we want you to understand, leveraging your listings and why it's so powerful. And so I thought we might start, we should start there because what I really want to focus on today isn't so much how we do those things because I believe most agents look at this differently. The very first step, in my opinion, is that you have to have a listing presentation. Now, is I travel the country, I have a big team, I talk to lots and lots of agents, I speak virtually, live, all that. Guys, one of the things that just shocks me is 95% of the real estate agents that I come across do not have a formalized listing plan. They don't know what they're going to talk about. They don't have a plan. They can't answer that question. Well, why should I list your house instead of a, a Rex or a Homie for 2500 bucks? Or why should I do it instead of open door and offer pad and all the rest? So what we got to do is we got to start with the listing presentation and then we can work backwards. And so what this call is about today or this class is about today is teaching you the listing presentation. And there isn't anybody, guys, in all the years I've done this, I had my own brokerage. I had hundreds and hundreds of agents. I coach a lot of agents. I travel a lot. The best listing presentation I've ever heard, not only in the content of it, but in how he presents it was Joseph. And so I asked him to join us today and really walk through his listing presentation. Now, full disclosure, I'm just using my son's listing presentation, but Joseph's going to go through it and really walk you through exactly what he says inside of somebody's house 
in how that works. And then really a lot of the strategy or the psychology behind it, because there's a lot of psychology in what he does. So Joseph, I'm going to let you kind of take it from there. You can tell me when to switch slides. You know, I might pop in and, you know, ask a few things. I might give you my input, but you get in the house, kind of tell them what you do when you first get in the house. Absolutely. And then I want everyone to understand, like the beauty is we're using Ryan's uh, listing presentation because that's what we do for our agents. We do things that are duplicatable and things that we know are time tested and proven. And we don't want everyone recreating the will. Take ours, make it even better if, if that makes sense, but just run with it. So that's what we're using today is Ryan's listing presentation. He's which a 24 year old. Rebranded. Yeah, he's a 24 year old kid, been a real estate agent for uh, a year and a half. So here's what I'll say. When I walk into a home, there's a few different schools of thought on this, but I'm always a big proponent of getting in there with someone, greeting them, and obviously, you know, with some of the dynamics that have been a little different, they're going to look, you know, a little different right now. But for the most part, I don't immediately go to the table and start talking. I want to put my stuff down, and I'm going to ask the seller, you know, your home looks wonderful. Would you mind walking me through your property? And we're going to start walking around their home. I'm going to just find as many opportunities as I can to really build rapport with them. If I see pictures on the wall, I might ask who that is and, and, and just kind of really engage them about uh, anything that seems to be important to them and, of course, about their, their home. Uh, you know, usually sellers really start telling you all the different things that they've done, and we're just looking for as many opportunities to build and establish really strong rapport during that time. Once that's done, I'm going to sit down with them open up this presentation, and this is slide number two. And traditionally, depending on how I came across this lead or this client, uh, I'm basically going to say, you know, hey, thanks again for meeting with me. I really appreciate it. When we talked on the phone or when we met at the open house or however I engaged you, uh, you mentioned that you were considering selling this home or that you knew you were going to sell your home or whatever it is because – you're moving to South Dakota or you want to grow into a bigger home or it's town, time, time to downsize. Whatever it is that they told me about their purpose for doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat it to them and I'm simply going to say, this is, this is kind of the, the magic statement thereafter, tell me more about that. So here's what it would look like. So Bob, thanks for meeting with me. I appreciate it. You know, your home's great. Uh, you know, when we first started talking at the open house, you mentioned that you were looking at that property because you're looking to upsize and, and, and get a bigger home for yourself. You know, tell me a little bit more about that. And well, we're going to start a dialogue, right? I mean, that's the idea. I want to really draw out the seller's purpose. And I'm going to have a conversation. Now, one of the main reasons why you need a visual presentation is obviously because you want to be impressive to the sellers, but so that, and most importantly, so that you don't have to worry about what to say next. I will tell you guys this, some of the most important pieces of my listing presentation is this slide almost exclusively. Because when they sit down with me and they start having a conversation with me and they know that I'm listening and they can see that I care and that I'm asking good questions because I'm genuinely interested, that's what really builds that level of trust. So this in and of itself is one of the main pieces of the puzzle. And Joseph, do you use a, a paper copy or do you do it on your computer? Computer. So I usually have this ready on my laptop, which folds over like a tablet, but this is visual. Um, I just kind of have it next to me and I'm face to face with them. You know, they call belly to belly. Right. I'm right there engaged with them, locked with eyes. Like we're really just having a great conversation. Perfect. So what we essentially do from here is, you know, after they kind of, we have that conversation, we really dive in. And obviously the psychology of this is I'm really, A, learning what their purposes are uh, because I can't help them to make good decisions for themselves if I can't understand where those decisions are coming from in terms of value, in terms of purpose, in terms of what they're trying to accomplish. So once that's clear, it's going to help me to help them. More importantly, I'm helping them to even crystallize why which is massively important. And so the next slide that I get to is, hey, thank you very much for being willing to share with me quite a bit about you, know, your, you as your family or, or what your goals are. Let me share with you a little bit about me. And this is Ryan's slide, but I'm going to get into my experience uh, as a real estate professional, some of the accolades that I have, 
you know, over 30 years of experience with the team that I work with. So I'm going to go through the career accolades. And then the next slide is even more important. But who I am outside of my real estate business and for Ryan is, you know, a, a young 20-year-old kid who loves spending time with his family. So, you know, when I tell you that I appreciate you meeting with me today, just know my entire family does. So thank you for taking the time for us to, to meet. This slide right here about who you are outside of real estate, if you go back real quick, Bob, that slide is so important because people want to know who they're working with beyond the professional. It's such an important slide to really isolate the connection that you have with somebody. And then immediately we drive over to the next slide, which is this. And some of you guys are going to get mad, but I love this slide. So I'll tell them is, you know, as we dive in, I want you to know, essentially there's two types of real estate professionals out there right now. Most agents really focus all of their time, energy, even assets on building the skill set of how to sell you to sign a contract. And forgive me if that's not my approach to the business. I've spent my entire career being very, very amazing at being a real estate practitioner. So I may not have the slickest clothes for you today. I may not be super eloquent, but just know, and I think you're going to see through my demonstration, I know how to get real estate sold. Now, the reason I'm doing this is there, there's a lot of reasons. Number one, I'm lowering the standard massively because guess what? I'm actually really good at closing. But when I've kind of lowered their standard of, uh, or the wall for them of like, okay, this guy's going to be slick, I'm helping them understand, look, I'm not one of those guys that you can see on YouTube um, practicing scripts every single morning walking around like a zombie. That's not me. All my energy and focus goes on selling houses, not selling you. But then I'm actually really good at that as well. Yeah, so, guys, don't ever, don't ever downplay that. That's not a huge statement. It totally, it, it totally takes people off their guard, and it totally diverts away from it's all about you and how many homes you sold and everything else. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I only care about selling your house. It doesn't matter what right. I did last week, last month, last year. This is about what what I can do to sell your house. And when I seen Joseph did this, I'm going, that is absolutely brilliant. And then Bob, I mean, dive into like immediately out of the gate how we start to add value. Right, because guys, at, successful sales is about adding value, right? So this is one of the things that's available in our market. It's actually not available in, in Joseph's market right now, but this is a home warranty company that we work with. And I go, well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, first thing we want to do is make sure that while your house is on the market, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a home warranty for you, completely complimentary. It's on me. So however long your house is listed on the market, you're going to have that available. So if your hot water tank went out while your house is on the market, I've got a home warranty company that's going to cover it minus the deductible. That's on me, right? So I, I want to make sure that you're covered. And then the other thing is I always recommend that a seller provide a home warranty because it makes the buyer feel better. But the other thing that I'll provide is it's, po it's called post-sale legal protection. And what that means is for two years after you sell the house, if the, set, the, the new buyer finds something wrong and they want to come after you, you'll get up to two years of legal protection up to $1,000. So if you need to get a lawyer or whatever it is, the home warranty company will pay you $1,000. That's two years after you close. So one of the things I want to do is make sure that you have peace of mind when you start the transaction, but I also want to make sure that you have peace of mind afterwards because there may be something that you know nobody you know, could even predict, but you're covered. And so I think it's important for you to understand. I want to make sure that you've got peace of mind as we go through that. So that's something we're able to do here. And, you know, probably 85% of our team's able to do it in their states. It's just that they don't do it in California, right? And then what I do is I just want, I want people to understand, and this is where that value comes in, right? So I want you guys to understand the seller has, the, the seller has choices, right? They've got discounters. They've got iBuyers. They could do it on their own. They've got other agents. They have choices. If you're a real estate agent that does not provide choices to a seller, the likelihood of them saying yes is small, right? So we have five different ways we can sell a home, and we'll go through them in more detail, but I can get a cash offer for your home. I'm not going to open door and offer pad. I've got a slide for that in a couple of minutes. 
right? So if you're watching this and you're going, well, you know, you know, they go to OfferPad. First of all, any cash sale that I do, I get paid a full three percent on it. So I've got over 50 different hedge funds and investors that will pay cash for the property, and more than 30 percent of them will pay market value because they're going to turn them into a rental property. So one of the first things we can explore, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is let's see if we could get a cash offer that would be at a price that would work for you. If not, we've got other choices. Well, we can do a traditional sale. I've got this online offers platform that I've created that allows us to sell your house in 14 days. You get the highest possible market value. And we have the buyer pay the commissions. So that's three of the five. Then, well, one of the dilemmas sellers have is, well, should I buy first and then sell? Well, wait a second. I, I can't go under contract because I can't carry two mortgages. I can't qualify for two. Well, if you have that scenario, don't worry about it. We've got some solutions for you. Work with a lot of different investors who can buy it, rent it back to you for a few months till you sell your other one. And so don't worry. we got solutions for you. And then the fifth one is, well, should you do some upgrades? Well, if you do, we can provide the cash flow for those upgrades. Now, remember, guys, I told you you're going to have to be outside the box. There's a whole series of ways that we do that. Part of it is with our production, we can afford to take and do that and provide the money up front. Because, well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the reason that's important, if we do a little bit of work, maybe we spend $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, but you could sell it for 40 or 50 more, the issue is the cash flow, right? So look at these houses before and looking at, look at them afterwards. So you'd get a much higher price for it, but typically, you may not have the cash flow for it. Well, we can put all that together, have the work done, provide the financing for it, or provide the cash flow to do it, and then get reimbursed at closing. So we've got a solution for you. So any of those five ways, we can help you. So let's talk about that. Well, first, my recommendation is let me go see. I've got more than 50 different investors. Some of them would definitely would you know want to buy the house at 20% under market value. That's just what they do. But I also have a substantial number of them that will pay cat or that will pay market value. Doesn't mean they'll overpay, but they'll pay market value because their goal is to turn it into a rental property for the next 10 to 15 years. So let's go to some of these different cash offers. It'll take me about 48 to 72 hours to put all those offers together. I'm going to need to get a little bit of information, some pictures, but my goal would be, well, let's see if we can do it that way. But it's got to be at a price that works because there's no need for you to give away your equity. I don't want you to have to sell to an iBuyer and give up 15 to 20% of your equity. There's no need to do it, especially if I can sell your house in 14 days. I can get you top dollar for it, and you don't even pay any commissions. So why sell it to a Zillow? And so let's start there, right? And then, Joseph, I'm going to let you go there because this would be more falling in line with a traditional sale. Hey, those are the ways that I can help you sell your home. But I want you to understand there's three there's three keys that sell your home. So, Joseph, this is this is your area. Yep. And so he, what's beautiful is that when you start with really engaging a seller and understanding the real purpose behind their move, maybe some of the obstacles associated with them achieving that goal, when you get their vision, that's what helps you, especially when you land on these five different approaches, essentially, how to navigate them. Uh, and, and furthermore, how to make the proper recommendations based on what that seller is trying to do. So that's our navigation here. But, you know, if we start going down the path of that more traditional approach, which is most of the time, right, Bob, most of them are going to say, you know, I've looked at that iBuyer thing. And, and here's what's great, just so you agents know, despite sellers becoming so much more aware of iBuyers, discount brokerages, the whole nine, the whole, the whole nine yards, we still know that 92% of them still want to work with a real estate professional. That's you. So we know that if we can offer them those solutions without them losing someone to hold accountable and someone that they have trust in, then we're giving them every reason to just stay put right here and not go outside. However, That's remember I said real estate's changing at warp speed. So all those iBuyers, your open door offer pad and Zillow, you know, do you now know that since the whole COVID closed down, when they came back, if you don't want their crappy offer, they'll list your house for 5.5%. They'll do all the handyman work. They won't do massive renovation. They'll do that. They'll have the carpets clean, and it's all on them. So all they did is said, hey, we're, we're only selling, you know, 
out of our inquiries, we only get about 3% of them to buy properties where we can buy their homes, but we're walking away from 97% of them. Let us be the real estate agent. So guys, you're going to have to do something that's better than what they do. That's why this is so important to be able to answer that million dollar question and to be out in front of the market because guys, these people are funded by billions of dollars of Wall Street money. You've got to be able to compete with that and talk to people in a way they understand. And that's why these three keys are so important. And it's the battle of that message, which is a whole other class that you teach. And that's what really transitioned my, uh, or elevated, I should say, my production game. 30% immediately by working with you. But uh, yeah, so let's dive in. So when we get to more of the traditional part, I'm going to go through the three keys of selling their home. And it always starts with presentation. And I help a seller understand. You know, so many people immediately want to focus on marketing and price. But what they miss is that if your home is not in a position to be properly presented, then you're missing the boat. I don't care what you do online. If you don't have your home ready and presentable, then everything you put online could actually work against you. So presentation is the foundation. Bob, if you go to the next slide, this is where I start to help someone understand why professional home staging and consultation is so massively important. And I quickly walk them through. You know, when a home is professionally staged or professionally consulted by a stager, it's 40% more, uh, 40, 40 per six, 46% of uh, the buyers are more likely to come and see the house. They're 28% more likely to overlook other faults. On average, that home will sell for 10% more than if that same home was not properly staged. That doesn't mean it'll sell for 10% more in the neighborhood, but on average, a, a home that's been professionally staged or, or consulted by a, a stager will sell for 10% more than if that same home was not uh, put through that process. On average, they sell in 72% less time, and I like to help them understand this. About 3% of brokers or agents pay for home staging, and the cost of staging is about 1% of, 1 of the home's value. So when I'm sitting with a seller, here's a really slick way to get from them how much they think their home is worth. Here's where I'll say, so re real quick, what, what do you think your home would sell for right now from a, a ready, willing, and able buyer? And if they said $500,000, i would go, okay, so 1% of, of that is about $5,000. So they don't understand what I did there is I got from them what they think their home is worth. And they still have, even after that, they just answered the simple question because they knew I was doing math. So it's a really slick way to get from them where their expectations lie, okay? The but I'm also helping them. Uh -huh. How you get the staging done. So this is beautiful. Essentially, the way I've set it up with my stager, because what I'm going to hit them with is that I'm actually going to pay the cost of their staging for them. The way that it works is I have an agreement with my stager where I pay them an upfront deposit. Usually, it's anywhere from $500 to $750. It includes my video and photo. And that stager comes, consults with the client, and then comes back and helps actually stage the home. The rest of the cost of that stage gets paid at closing. So the staging relationship that I have is all collaborative. We're in this thing together. The goal is to get the home sold or not. Because if the home doesn't get sold, I lose the deposit. And they also lost out on the rest of the income. But that's why we are always focused on getting the property sold. And so when Joseph magic. gets to the pricing pyramids or the pricing paradigm, he's going to walk you through how he gets that paid for mm -hmm. from the seller and, comp and gets compensated that way. And it's absolutely brilliant how he locks people in on pricing with the staging. So when we get to the pricing part, he'll walk you through that. It's absolutely brilliant. And what we've always done here is if you go back really quick, we always make sure that we're providing proof of concept with properties that we've sold um, with this process. So that's what you see here. I mean, if anyone ever speaks to the photos that I have, it's specific to what I've done. And I can go, oh yeah, that's one of the properties that I sold in a certain period of time or more than the listing price. So it's proof of concept. Go ahead, Bob. And then of course, go ahead, Bob. I was going to say, this is just another slide that's a little bit more recent with some of the statistics from home stagers, about 83% of professionally sell staged homes sell for asking price or above. Only 20%, 28% of agents work with a professional home stager. And so according to the, you know, 
2019 NAR survey, 83% of buyers agents say a professionally staged home is easier to visualize, while 86% of sellers uh, sellers agents say a professionally staged home sells faster than a non-staged home. Guys, we're just producing or providing facts for them to understand that, hey, that staging is critical. And one of the easiest ways, Bob, for me to get the seller completely on board and engaged is mm -hmm. when you go to a brand new uh, community, a brand new home community, do they have their model stage? And oh my gosh, they're always beautiful. Yes, that's why we know this whole concept or process works. See all the psychology in there, folks? It's just brilliant, right? So then what I help them understand is great. So once your home is in that perfect presentation mode, literally, when the stager's fluffing the last pillow, that's when we only trust a professional photographer and professional videographer to come in immediately thereafter and start really capturing all the images and the video so that we're in a place now where your home's presentation is stellar. Now, I will tell you guys this. This is not something I go over with my seller, but I want to tell you a little secret. Uh, I lost a listing from a friend. It's my buddy. I helped them buy this beautiful condo. Three years later, the family was growing. They sold it. I didn't get that listing because someone was door knocking, and the term that they used was photo shoot. It got my clients so excited because you, you mean our little condo here is going to get a photo shoot? They got so enamored by that statement, they signed the listing agreement. So now I never, ever miss an opportunity to say photo shoot, video shoot, because you never know what's going to trigger that seller to really feel like they've got the white gloves for them. So photo shoot, video shoot, little tip there. So that's kind of the conversation that we have on this slide. So, Bob, go ahead. because I so know this we, we put this in here for home renovation, even though we talked about it in home renovation. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this is why presentation is so important. Because, well, this is the same house, the same kitchen, the same bathroom. Do you see what a difference is? A little bit of home renovation does, but also what professional pictures do. Which one do you think, if you were buying a home, which one of these do you think you would react to? And that just shows you how important these are. These are actually from listings, listing photographs before and after. And so at the end of the day, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, our job is to try and help present your house in the most favorable light. Even if you need a little bit of work, we, well, we can help with that because I think you could agree if your house looked like it did on the right versus what it looked like on the left, you're going to get substantially more money, aren't you? You guys would, and the, the way that you get this, you go, well, you guys would pay more money for a house that look like the one on the right versus the one on the left, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Because now you're talking to them and you're putting them in the proper frame of mind. And so it just clearly demonstrates what these home renovations do, right? Yep, and it's always so important to put them, when you're talking about their home, put them in the position of the buyer. It's so important. So once we've gone through the presentation and they're crystal clear on how that works, then we start to get into promotion. So... Instead of doing like this thousand point, you know, uh, marketing plan, I'm very strategic on the things that I do that are different and that work. So I'm going to walk them through this. And number one, you're going to see that professional home staging consultation. And the reason I'm telling them it's part of my promotion is because this is where I'm now sharing with them that that is in fact something that's going to come out of pocket on my expense. Now, sellers don't need to know when I pay for that at closing or not. All they need to know is that it's coming out of my pocket. And you'd be surprised right there. They're already super excited. Then we talk about the photo and video shoot because normally, if you'll notice how I did it, I told them already that the home staging alone on average is about 1% of the selling price or the, the home's value. So when I said, you know, what do you think it's worth, 500000 I took something that I wanted there. And then I said, okay, that's about $5,000, and I moved on. So what I did is I kind of put them in a position where they're like, uh, is this guy going to ask us to pay five grand?" and then all this video and photo? Man, it makes sense. It works. Look at how much the return looks like. And here I'm putting them back on ease so they can know I'm paying for that. That's the massive value proposition you're getting from me. And, and so then I go through some of that in pricing. It's brilliant. Yeah. 
So, th so then we start going through these items, which again are extremely important. I always make sure the seller's clear because people our society, they're a bunch of zombies staring at a screen 24 seven. Most of our marketing effort is consumer direct. I do have a really great strategy. I go over with them on how we target agents from our database, with, which is the MLS, and data mine to see which agents already have a saved search for one of their buyers. We're going to market to them directly, but most of our focus is consumer direct. It's so massively important. Of course, everyone knows how uh, people buy, right? They start for real estate. They start online. That's just where they start. We also know the, that people uh, find their real estate from a very broad uh, number of places. And it could be that they go to Redfin instead of Zillow. Uh, maybe they look up Yahoo Real Estate. But the reality is all these other syndications and why they're so massively important is because they get brought in from other websites through ad spend. So when it comes to you know, all this syndication, it's A, a way to make sure that people are getting intrigued based on their own search capabilities or, or their search interests. Plus, it ensures that we know how to make sure we're marketing internationally, which is massively important for specific markets. I know it's really important here in Southern California. So, so we you. know people start their real estate search online. We're, we're marketing locally, nationally, and internationally. And remember, words count, right? Just like photo shoot makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, when you target it that way, hey, we're targeting local, national, and international. And yeah, Joseph's That's market right. in Southern California, international is just huge. It is. It's absolutely an important aspect of the marketing channel that if you're missing it, uh, your sellers are missing out. So well said. And then we have a program where we actually target local renters, where we know that they're already paying rent equal to what the mortgage payment would be. See, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when we market, when, you know, when an average agent markets, really all the rest of the agents, they're only looking for buyers. Well, because I work with over 50 different investors who will buy the house, pay cash, pay market value, all they want me to do is find a tenant. I'm marketing to both buyers and renters. And so I know statistically that 84% of all renters want to move within a five-mile radius of where they currently live. I have the ability to mine the data to find out when their lease expires, how much they're paying in rent, and does it equal what it would be in a mortgage? Well, I'm going to target them specifically. If they want to buy the house, great. If they want to rent the house, great. But do you see where it'd be better for an agent to be able to have buyers coming in and also tenants? Because now I just doubled the number of people I can market to. That's it's very powerful, don't you think? And the sellers go, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Because what does the seller want us to do? They want us to go out there and do everything possible to get the right people with their eyeballs on their property. So by kind of laying it out in detail, all the different aspects, it's massively important. Because... Everything that we do, folks, in terms of marketing is geared towards one thing. We're not running Facebook ads to get Facebook leads or Google pay-per-click for you to fill in your name and email. We drip on you for 18 months. Our goal is very simple. We want to compress the time a home is on the market to create a sense of urgency. We want to do an open house for two days, and it's the only time that it's available for seen, for to be seen. And our goal is to take and put as many people as we possibly can into the home in those two days for many, many reasons. There's a whole psychology that I'll get into about pricing and why it works that way. There's a psychology. How did Joseph get six listing appointments? He had neighbors coming in going, oh, my God, what are you doing to get this many people into a house? We've never seen anything like it. Would you sell our house for us? Boy, that would be an easy listing presentation, right? And so everything that we do is geared towards being belly to belly with people. And it's real simple, guys. Would you rather have a Facebook lead that you're going to drip on for 18 months or somebody standing in front of you that's looking to buy a house in the next whatever it might be, one month to six months to one year? And if you have hundreds of those people coming in, what are the likelihood you're going to pick up more than one deal, one closing from that? So you need to understand the way we think of our marketing isn't for trying to get Facebook leads, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. We want to sell your house. And the best way we can do it is to get as many people in that house as we can 
And we'll talk about that for you guys. We'll talk about that in the pricing segment. This is how we market our properties, right? Yep. And one of the ways that I wrap that up too, Bob, is by helping them understand they're going to start their search online. That's where they start. They're deciding to buy your home standing in the kitchen or the backyard or the living room. And just based on the house that I'm in or, you know, my conversation with the seller, again, that's why I spend time with them. When they start showing me an area of their home that they love, that's the, that's the place that I land that point on. They're going to start that search online. We all know that that's what happens. But they're deciding to buy this home standing in that kitchen there. And sellers get that. So that's what all of our marketing effort is. But then part of promotion that I think most people miss is this, and I help the seller understand, you know, part of promotion is agent compensation. So the reason I want to talk about this immediately is because you need to know that for the average realtor out there nationwide, they're still selling anywhere from four to six homes per year, which means they're getting about four to six paychecks to in total annually. Why do I say paychecks? Because we're getting paid on commission because I'm trying to help them understand what it's like to be an agent and how often they're getting paid on average based on our statistics, okay? So I'm trying to put them in our shoes. So what I tell them is, I share this with you because if you leverage an attractive compensation for the buyer's agent, we can really start to differentiate your home versus all the other ones in the neighborhood. Next slide. But before we get there, I want you to understand this me paying for the professional home staging and consultation, the video shoot, the photo shoot, just those items alone, we already know based on the statistics that we looked at, that's going to bring on average about a 10% higher selling price than if, we, than if those things were done for your home. So even Mr. Seller, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, even if you offered me a 7% listing right now, even if you gave me 7%, I'm actually still coming at a 3% net benefit to you, meaning I don't cost you a thing. I make you money. But as I promised, I don't dictate to my clients. So next slide, you get to pick your, the compensation. So on the listing side, I charge 3.5%, and you get to decide how much would you like to offer the buyer's agent. Now, here's what I'll tell you. Most people, and, and when I'm there, you, I would run my hand along the 3.5%. This, this is what I'm compensated. Now, what would you like to offer the buyer's agent? Most of that conversation comes back to me. Well, Joe, what do you think? And this is often where I might go to some comparables I have printed and go, well, let's look at what's recently sold. We got a 2.5, a 2.5, a 3, a 2, a 2.5, and, and I'll kind of show them. You're looking on average anywhere from 2.5 to 3% which means I wouldn't go anywhere south of 2.5%. And if you really want to accentuate the, the idea we just talked about, go 3% plus. And I still allow them to decide. Now, here's the magic. When I first sat down with these folks, not only did I pull out this presentation on my laptop, I also pulled out a listing contract that's sitting right next to me. Why? Because selling should not be climactic it should be kind of a really flat emotional line. If you're a great salesperson, there is no emotional climax. That's when you're masterful. So I pull out the contract immediately and just have it there. And when we get to this part and they start answering that question and asking me, I pull out the pen, I get to the paper and I go, so what do you guys have in mind for the buyer's agent? And they may go, uh, I don't know, two and a half percent. Okay, great. So three and a half and two and a half, so that's 6% total, right? And they go, yes, I write that on the listing agreement. And two and a half percent is going to the buyer's agent, correct? Yes, great. And I put the pen down and we start moving forward. Now, I want you guys to notice something here. What's one thing Bob and I have not even touched yet in our listing presentation? You can type it in the chat box or yell it out if you're in the room. It's price. I haven't gotten to price. And you know what? If they don't pick a commission, then I know something's wrong. Why am I going to give them my professional expertise on pricing their property if I'm not the guy for the job? So this is a wonderful way to really start to do trial closes on your client. Because if they pick the commission, I already know I'm done. I'm listing this property. That's just what's going to happen. It has never failed me. If we get that to that part, 
we pick the commission for total and buyer's agent, it's over. I'm getting this listing. It has not failed. And now we get to really start to dive into other things. But if someone starts having hesitation or, well, I have a question about this and how does that work, right then and there, I already know there's objections. Let's uncover them. Let's figure them out. And then let's get them back to pen to paper. What are we doing on compensation? So that's how we kind of really lock it down as far as knowing that we're proceeding. So Bob... Is that smooth or what, folks? I told you that's the best way I've ever seen to do it. And wait, we got a little bit more in there that'll come when we get into pricing about how he uses some of that. So, um, but that's the key, folks. There's no big close at the end. You know, oh well, what do you think? And you put your pen down and you stare at him. Well, there isn't any of that. You just got the elephant out of the room here, right? Which to me is pretty powerful. Yep. So once we get there, now it's time to get into pricing and it's all in the, my pivot here is like, okay, great. So let's talk about one of the most important pieces. The last key to selling your home is price. Now, before we get into the metrics on pricing, I really want to get into the psychology of a buyer because for you as a home seller to understand, understand the buyer's psychology, the more that you can leverage that for your own benefit. And so what I'm going to help them understand is like, let's talk about value just in general. Like who really decides value? Is it you? Is it me? Is it the appraiser? Is it the buyer? And then I'm going to help them understand on the next slide what value really looks like in our market. And value really has to do with what the market or a buyer is willing to pay and what the seller is willing to accept. You know, Joseph, I'm even going to go back a little bit of this because I want to expound on this a little bit. So when I do this in somebody's house, I just say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm sure you have a dollar amount in your mind about what you want to sell a house for. But what's critical for you to understand that there's only one person who decides what your house is worth. And unfortunately, it isn't you, and it isn't me, and it isn't the appraiser. Here's what I'd like you to think about. Um, you know, we can come in with our comps and, you know, it's a 1,500 square foot house, three bedroom, two bath. Well, if I had comps that said it was worth 300 or 500 or whatever it was in your market, and the appraiser said it was worth 500. How would real estate ever appreciate? The only person who dictates the value of your home is the buyer. That's why it's so critical in our marketing to drive as many potential buyers as we can into your property because they're the only one that counts. You, me, and the appraiser, unfortunately, we're just not that important. And unfortunately, the buyer, they don't care what you paid. They don't care what you need. They don't care what you want. They don't care that what your neighbor said the house was worth or what another agent said or what it would cost you to rebuild. They only care about what they're willing to pay. The more people I can get into your house that I can get them to fall in love with it, the more likely we are to get a higher price. And so at the end of the day, folks, The market's going to dictate what the value of the house is. My job as your agent is very simple. Get your house as presentable as humanly possible. Do the most uh, 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 powerful marketing that we can to drive traffic into your house, right? Because that's our job is to get as many people, but the buyer is going to be willing to do that. Now, in a minute, I'm going to talk about how I've created a system to allow that to happen and take care of the psychology. But what we want you to understand right now, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is that the longer your house stays on the market, right, you'll hear, hey, start it really high, and then you can always reduce the price. You just need to know that that's not a good strategy. The way I'm going to talk to you about marketing it today, if we can't find a cash offer, is to get it under contract in 14 days, get the highest possible market price for it, and save you on commission so that you put more money in your pocket. If that's okay with you, we can talk about that in a couple of minutes. What's anybody going to say to that? They're going to, no, Bob, I don't want to hear about that. They're going, no, no, tell me about it. We'll get to that, but I want them to understand pricing up front that it really doesn't matter what they need or what they want. Yep, and I'll also share this with my sellers as well because when it comes to professional home staging, we get it. The appraisal, and that's what a lot of people worry about, is meant to be an objective look at quote-unquote value. Well, guess what? It's not as objective as you think. And all of the homes that I've had staged, man, we're always blown away about how high we can get that appraisal to come out. Why? Because appraisers are people. They're still subjective. 
So it's a really, really powerful way to wrap up why all of these services matter. When I start to dive into pricing with my sellers, one of the other things I love to ask them is this, hey, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, have you ever heard of the term like seller's market versus buyer's market? And every, every single time I ask that, they go, oh yeah, of course, I, I've heard of a buyer's market and seller's market. And I go, great, has anyone ever explained to you how it's defined? And to this day, no one's been able to tell me what that is. So it's a really good transition because then I get to help them. Basically, the difference between a seller's market and a buyer's market has to do with what's called an absorption rate. An absorption rate is how quickly all the homes will get bought up. Now, the next slide here that you're seeing is where I actually dive into the absorption rate based on their market. Now, in my multiple listing service, I have this a uh, program called InfoSparks. It's basically a, a data, a visual data driven software where I get to get into that stuff. If you don't have one of these, just make sure you show them the number, but I like to show a visual. So what I'll show them is, you know, in Rancho Cucamonga right now, you're at a about a 2.4 month uh, inventory or absorption rate. So is this more of a buyer's market or a seller's market? And, you know, once they understand it, they're going to go, well, it sounds like it's more of a seller's market. And I'll go, agreed. Next slide, I'm going to show them. Now, even when a home is priced correctly, what we're finding right now, even though it's a seller's market, even though the inventory is low, when a home is priced correctly, we're finding that the sellers are obtaining about a 98.5 or 98.7% of their asking price in terms of the sale price. And even when they price correctly and get about that 98.7% of their asking price, next slide, we're still finding that the average days on market is about 30 days on market. So what we're doing here is we're allowing the seller with data to set some of their own expectations. You guys would be surprised how many great conversations come from here. And a lot of times sellers will start to throw out what their strategy or mentality is on pricing just based on data, which is great because now we're starting to get an insight. I already know what they think their home is worth, right? Uh, and now I'm starting to get a feel for what their strategy might be. This is what really preps me to start getting down the further the line of what Bob was talking about. So next slide. This is where we get to say, okay, so here's the good news, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. A lot of people have a lot of different approaches. And I don't, I don't say, you know, the wrong way to do it is. I, like, I let them say face because they've already shared with me what their mentality is. Instead, I'll say, well, one strategy is to price high so that way you have some room to negotiate, right? Uh, another strategy is to put it right at market value and kind of hope that you get some more people to show up. And then other people really understand how the psychology or strategy of pricing works, and they'll price a little bit below market value to create a frenzy. Then we go to the next slide. Here's what the data tells us behind those three strategies. Every single time a home hits the market and it comes in right at perceived market value, 60% of the buyers who are ready, willing, and able to buy that home will actually show up to see it. And if you'll recall, I said people start their search online but they make the decision to buy your home standing in the kitchen. So if you list right at market value, about 60% of the people who could buy your home are going to show up to see it. Now, again, one strategy that people think of is let's price a little high, and then we have some room to negotiate. What they don't realize is that they probably cut in half, if not more than in half, the number of people who even show up to look at that home. That's why another strategy that people leverage and find success with is to list below that market value to really accentuate how many buyers show up. And therefore, the idea is having these buyers compete against one another. And, and so, there's, a re there's a caveat to that, folks, like by pricing low, hoping that you can create a bidding war. I I'll be honest, in today's market, probably it'd be okay. But here's the downside. Let's say Joseph's $500,000 house he puts into MLS at four fifty, dollars and he only gets a four sixty dollars offer. He's got to sell that house. The seller's mm -hmm. got to sell. So there's some risk that you incur and that they incur. And so it's a good strategy, but if it doesn't work, how many times does it not have to work in order for you to get sued, lose your license, lose all your money, and lose everything you've spent your life working for? Or just simply lose the trust of your clients. <laughs> Any of those things. So that's not a reasonable way to do it, right? 
So what I did a few years ago is I created a system to be able to take an offer online where we go out and we submit our offers online and we do it utilizing the psychology of pricing, right? So we've created a system that allows us to underprice the property. So if you look below, I have two houses. Both of them are worth $300,000. One's priced at $300,000. One's priced at two forty. dollars Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when we put on our buyer hats for you right now, which house do you want to go look at first, the two forty dollars or the $300,000? They go, well, obviously, the two forty. dollars well, remember, the value of your property is determined by what a buyer is willing to pay. And the more buyers who see your home, the better chance I have of creating a bidding frenzy. You're probably freaking out, though. They're going, you tell me that we should start it at 240 And I'm going to go, yes, I am. But here's what I want you to understand. You have absolutely nothing to lose using this strategy. You have the complete right to accept an offer, reject an offer, or negotiate an offer. So if all we got to is 250, you don't have to take it. If you did it another way, right, just listing in an MLS hoping to get into a bidding war and it didn't work, well, you're in trouble. With my system, you don't have to worry about that, right? Because remember, my job is to get as many people into your open house as I possibly can so I can get them in looking at your house, even if they're not qualified to buy in that price range. Here's the psychology part. We have somebody walks in, they go, oh my gosh, I love this house. And they see that you got 10, 15, 20 people in a house at a time. And the wife looks at the husband or vice versa and they go, well, we're not getting it for 240 if you really like it. We set the hook and now we reel them in. Our job is to create so much you know, chaos, for lack of a better term, by having so many people in our open house that they get caught up in the bidding frenzy, right? If you doubt that it works, go watch at the courthouse steps on foreclosures and watch the bidding frenzies, right? Look at the multiple highest and best offers, right? Don't you guys as agents hate that? So our marketing is designed to do one thing, drive as many people in, put a, a, a timeline. It's only 14 days that we're going to do this. We don't put a lockbox on the house. You want to see it? You can come and see it on Saturday and Sunday with the rest of the people. Why do we do it that way? Because we force a lot of people into the open house. So just like Joseph had 250 at his, our record is 586 people into an open house. We sold the house for a lot more money. So here's how it works, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Traditionally, if we do this traditionally, we can do this for you. You know, your house is worth, let's say, 300000 You chose 6% commission. You're going to pay 18000 You're about 1% in closing costs. You're going to net $279,000. Now, remember, folks, when you're sitting in, in somebody's house, you typically would ask them, what are you thinking about selling the house for? And they'll tell you, well, you know, my neighbor said this and Zillow said that. But when it's all said and done, we figured our closing costs and commission, we need to net 275 out of this house to be able to do what we want to do. So you focus on 300. I focus on 275. Using this online offer, this auction strategy, online auction, I have the same house. We get a $282,000 bid. We add the buyer's premium or their commission. In this case, it would be $16,920. The contract is written at $298,920. The seller still nets their $279,011, and we get paid a commission. Now, this class today is not about how this works. If you're interested in attending the class where I get into the deep, dark secrets of how all this works, just reach out to whoever invited you, put it in the chat box, um, get with whoever invited you to this class, and we'll invite you to another training class that we do specifically on this strategy. But what happens is in this scenario, folks, the buyer is actually paying the commission. So when we say we can sell your house for top dollar in 14 days and you pay no commission, we have the buyer do it. This is how it works. It may be confusing for you without going through this class, but I don't have the time to go through all of that. So what and happens is, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, in order for you to net what you want, we have to get to a $282,000 bid. So if we started at 240, all we got to do is move to 282, right? But our real goal is not to get to 282. We want to get people caught up in the bidding frenzy because all this is completely transparent online, happens in real time. They see their offer and they see it show up and then somebody else adds 500 bucks to it or 1,000 bucks to it. 
And the wife looks at the husband or vice versa. Are we really, are we really going to lose this house over five hundred or thousand dollars? And the answer is no. And so just like that listing I showed you that Joseph had, you start at what, Joseph? Five twenty. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. He ended up with the highest offer was five eighty two. That's correct. The seller was thrilled at five sixty. You think he was thrilled at five eighty two? And what you guys need to understand is this is the timeline, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, how it works. I start all the marketing. I do hold an agent open house about a week and a half into it so agents can come and see the house. I can explain to them how this whole online offer, this bidding process works. Saturday and Sunday, we do the, uh, we do the open house. Everybody has till Thursday at noon to get us their pre-approved loan because we don't let them submit an offer on the house unless they're pre-approved. So remember, Joseph had 19 pre-approved buyers to work with at the end of it because they couldn't bid on the house if they didn't have a loan pre-approval and the auction ends at five o'clock or somewhere within there because what happens is a lot of people think well, I'm going to trick the system I'm going to submit a bid at four minutes four o'clock a 459 in 55 seconds well as soon as that bid's received it extends it another five minutes I built it that way on purpose and then it continues going on till the last people drop out. So here's the cool part, folks. You know how you get these highest and best offers? And you got people sometimes, like my son actually wrote 10 offers on a house. The 11th one got accepted. And he had to drive an hour each way for where they were looking for houses. You can't be efficient and make a lot of money as a real estate agent that way, can you? And as your buyers get more and more frustrated, here's the deal. On our listing, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, whoever wants your house has the ability to do it has the ability to get it. They just have to pay for it. Mr. and Mrs. Agent, if your buyer really wants the house, they're totally able to buy it. This is how the timeline works, right? Because the question you have to ask yourself, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, why do all the banks auction their house? Why do the government entities, USDA, Freddie, HUD, all that? Guys, what we do works exactly like HUD. The only difference is, or HUD, USDA, and VA, the only difference is we're completely transparent. On a HUD, let's say, for example, you don't know if they have another offer. With us, you do. It's a completely transparent process. Well, why do all these entities that have all this money sell their properties that way? Because they get the most amount of money for it. So why aren't agents helping their clients do it in the same manner as the people with all the money who get even more for their properties than what they thought they, they could? If you doubt it, guys, go down to your courthouse steps and watch the foreclosures being purchased. We just use what all these entities use. There just wasn't a system before I created it, right? So here, guys, if I need to, I'll go through the benefits, right? Hey, it's a simple sales process. Doesn't require any negotiating. It could, but it doesn't. The buyer pays most or all the real estate commission. The deadline creates urgency. The typical timeline is 14 to 30 days. You set the terms and day of your auction so that you can plan your life accordingly. We're going to do an open house. I only need you to leave for two days. No lock boxes, nobody bugging you. The sale isn't contingent on inspections and appraisals, although we can make it that way. The buyer still has the ability to do it. The competitive bidding process helps you receive the true market value of the house, and we handle everything for you. Well, why would a buyer want to do it? Well, they have complete control over buying the house they want. It eliminates that whole multiple blind offer that you hate. I hate it as an agent. The buyers hate it, but we just got rid of that. And we make it a completely transparent process so that whoever wants to pay can get the price, can get the house. And guys, they get caught up in the psychology of it and pay more. They have the ability to preview the house, right? We're doing the, the open house. I recommend all sellers do a home inspection first. If an agent, if somebody comes in with a buy, without a buyer, I can reduce the buyer premium to get both sides of it. And all the process does, folks, it establishes the contract price. The contract price is the highest bid plus the buyer's premium equals contract price. All financing is accepted. So again, my purpose today is not to do that. I just want you to understand what I explained in the client's house. This is why this is beneficial. This gentleman wanted to buy this house in Washington. Why the buyer's agent, the seller's agent, didn't put it up for highest and best, I don't know. He was one of five offers. They accepted one, never put it up. He looked it up about six weeks later after it would close. And he was willing to pay $35,000 more than what they got. The seller lost money. 
The agent didn't get paid. They lost out on about $1,000 in commission, and the buyer didn't get the house they wanted. My process eliminates that, right? And so this is where we just go. That's how that whole online offers. Let's try cash first, right? So for us, we've got 50 different places, more than 50 places. We can go and do that if we get a price, great. If they go, well, we're kind of leaning towards the traditional, well, why don't we do this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? We have 14 days. It costs you nothing. You have nothing to lose. I'm the one who's going to spend all the marketing and time to promote it. In the last case scenario, we could always go back and sell it traditionally. And then we just and walk through these commitments. What I want you to understand, we're going to provide professional marketing and represent, uh, representation. We want to assist you in getting the highest value for your property, the highest value possible. We want to provide the best possible methods of exposing your property to all the potential buyers. We want to get as many qualified buyers as possible into your home until it's sold. And then we want to communicate the activities. The cool part is you can watch what we do online. And, then we're going and to Bob, here, here's, here's what I'm going to tell everyone too. Like, understand when it comes to leveraging this presentation, the reason why it's so impactful is twofold. Number one, we started with really diving into the seller's purpose, the seller's goal. Why are you doing this? That helps us to craft what this conversation is going to look like. They're going to feel it's very collaborative. They're going to feel like it's more of them driving the conversation, but we're going to make the right recommendations. And second, this is, does not have to be a linear presentation. I think so many people get stuck there where they go, okay, uh, I know you want to talk about uh, marketing, but I, we need to start first with what I want to talk about. That's not the way to do it. And when we hear from someone right out of the gate, hey, listen, our purpose of selling our house is we need every single penny to buy this other home. Like, you know, I, we're going to have to talk about commissions because we're not going to be able to pay you much. How easy of a transition would it be to go, Psh, you know what, let's talk about that right now. Because I have five different ways to sell your home. I think we need to talk about how I can literally help you list and sell your home where you're going to pay me zero commission and boom, let's get here now So instead of going through the other stuff. Remember the million dollar question, how are you going to compete? Well, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, my brother-in-law is going to do it. Great. What vehicle does he have to be able to get you the highest price and you're still going to have to pay the buyer's commission, right? Well, I've got a way that that doesn't have to happen for you. Well, I'm going to do uh, Rex for 2500 bucks. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, why would you pay $2,500 when I can do it for you and we have the buyer pay all the commissions, yours included, and I can get it done in 14 days and you get top dollar? Well, I'm going to use uh, Open Door Offer Pad. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, why would you walk away from 15 to 20% of your equity when I can get it sold and closed in the same time frame that you can move? And we'll get you top dollar. You'll be able to protect all of your equity. We can get it under contract in 14 days. And... You're not going to pay any fees or commissions, which means you net more money. Why would you ever give away all of your equity? So no matter what somebody wants to throw at me, folks, our unique selling proposition, sell your home top dollar 14 days, zero commission. How do you beat that? And so, again, this isn't the class where I can go through all the, the details of how all that works. But, again, if you're interested in that, get with whoever invited you. Reach out to Joseph or I. And we can let you know when the next time we do that class, okay? So this is that's the listing presentation, folks. That's, that's it. Because honestly, Bob, with these ones, like the, the last two slides you went through, uh -huh. I, usually, I usually don't even get there. Usually exactly. it's like, all right, let's, we already wrote the commission. Let's pick the price. And then we're on to, all right, what's next? Let's get our stager out here. Or let's talk about when we're going to launch the auction. Whatever that next step looks like, we're on to the contract. We're signing we're talking through it. We're setting up our next appointments to transition. I, I rarely even get here. It's here exactly. in case someone says, well, you know, I really want to make sure there's a, how are you going to keep me informed throughout the uh, listing uh, uh, time frame? All right, great. We'll get here and we'll talk about it. Otherwise, we're just on to moving forward. Right. And so, folks, that's all this is by having a presentation. Listen, we can hop around from slides, whatever it is that the, the seller presents. All I want you guys to understand is we're ready for it. You have to be ready. Here's the difference, guys. When you go in with a presentation, you're going to be a lot more confident. When you get skilled at it, like Joseph is now, he's, he's not sitting there sweating about what he's going to do or how he's got to pivot. He's ready for whatever somebody throws at him. And that confidence 
is going to translate into more listings because they don't want to work with somebody who lacks confidence or you know is fumbling around for things or doesn't have answers. This allows our agents to be prepared. This is why we convert. Right. So just out of curiosity, I just love this graphic, I'll be honest with you. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 meaning this was the worst listing presentation you've ever seen, or 10 meaning like, oh my gosh, how fast could I do that? How do I implement all these tools and systems? That's amazing. How many of you guys think this presentation, that online bidding platform, that the class wasn't about this today, but I did enough to whet your appetite, the scripting and the way that we did what we did, and the systems would be an amazing way to build your listing business. I won't be able to see it, but who's ever running your room will be able to. If you're watching this virtually, then put it in the chat box, and that I'll be able to see. So 1 to 10, 1 being horrible, 10 meaning like, wow, completely changed the way I think about listings. All right, cool. We're starting to see lots of 10s. Thank you very much. 9s and 8. Perfect. Haven't really seen any more of those. Don't see any ones, so we're pretty cool there. Raise your hand if you're in the room. Awesome. So I think you got some value from what we showed you today, right? So here's a question for you. How'd you guys like to learn how you could work with us, right, Joseph and I and our team, to use the exact same system, the presentations that we showed you today, the scripting, the tools that we have available in your business? Like, Joseph, when you first made that move, how much did your GCI go up just year one? So uh, coming into to working with you, I was already a, a, a good producer, decent producer. And I want to stay a great modest. producer. Um, and I still experience almost a one-third increase in my production year over year. It's about 32.9% growth. And how much, of, how much has your personal net worth gone up in the last 28 months? Do you know? It feels really good. Um, <laughs> I can I'm tell sure you, you know that number better than I do. But, uh, you know, with everything else that we do and really transitioning from being in a real estate job, even though I was a great producer, it was still a real estate job, to really through your guidance building a real estate business, uh, I know it's grown tremendously. So here's the number, folks. It's a shade short of six and a half million dollars. The cash flow from his real estate business could be sold for about six and a half million two and a half years later. Man, that's a lot better than making on average forty thousand dollars a year as a realtor, right? And Bob, I'm also going to help people understand that you know, with this presentation that we just looked at, just in general, the ability to sell from a place of abundance is a game changer. I'm not worry about commission. I have no worry about if someone's, we all have had those sellers that are crazy, right? I don't have to take those on because I'm looking for a commission. If, if I'm selling on a different price, level. If yeah. it's a house from the hoarders TV show, <laughs> or you just don't like the people, you don't have to take a listing, do you? Absolutely not. And, and, unfortunately, and I think that helps me convert on just a different way. And unfortunately, that truly this bothers me. There are so many agents in our business that take business that they know is going to be a nightmare, but they have to take it to pay the bills. So here's what I'm going to tell you, folks. We're expanding. We're looking for hardworking, coachable agents that we can teach to focus on listings, plug into these tools and systems, and help them do that. How do we do it? Well, there's a couple of combinations of things. Number one, we're very skilled at what we do. Number two, we plugged into the eXp platform. Many of you may or may not have heard of eXp. It doesn't matter. Here's what I'm going to ask you. I don't care what you've heard, what you think you know. I promise if you knew, you wouldn't be on the other side. Comparing eXp to any other company is like comparing apples to oranges. So give us about 20 minutes, and we're going to take and tell you how we're able to take and help you build that kind of a business and build your personal net worth in 28 months like that, right? What we have to understand, folks, just like the listings, innovation is always happening. About 10 years ago, eXp took technology and completely changed the way traditional real estate brokerages operate. Just like Blockbuster disappeared by Netflix and the retailers disappeared by Amazon. Well, eXp is gobbling up huge amounts of market share because of the compensation and real estate business model that they've created. So I want to take a couple minutes and go through that. What I'd like you to understand, guys, in only 10 years, we actually have 31,000 agents now. I can tell you that. 
The Swanepoel Mega 1000 ranks the top 1,000 U.S. residential brokerages. EXP was ranked in the number two for top mover for sales volume growth. Year over year, 83%. We're a production-oriented company, despite what anybody tells you. We're number three in the United States for closed transaction sides in 2019, closing on 130,627 sides in 2019 which was a 77.8% 77 increase. We're number three for agent count at the end of 2019, ending the year with 25,423 years. Despite all this COVID nonsense, we're up to 31,000 agents now. We're number four for closed sales volume in 2019, closing on 36.2 billion in sales. And folks, here's a number I want you to contemplate very hard. EXP paid back over $485 million last year to those 25,423 agents in the form of revenue, just short of a half billion dollars was paid back to the real estate agents, and I'm going to explain how that works. Ten years. That's why we're growing like that, folks. But what I want you to understand for us, for Joseph and I, and for everybody in our group, production is our main focus. The way that we do that is we know that great cash flow starts with listings. That's why we taught that class today. That's why I created that online offers platform. Our goal is to help agents become powerful listing agents so that we can take market share for sales in local markets. And then using the eXp compensation platform, to build additional cash flow and revenue streams for our agents to build personal net worth. It all starts with listings. I told you before, we have eight different targets. I'm not going to go through that. We have marketing strategies, plans, tools, and systems and relationships on all of those targets. We have our exclusive lead generation agency. This is only available to the agents on our team. This is not an EXP thing. We have our own lead agency. There's a cost to do it, right? We're not paying for your Facebook ads. But if you wanted Facebook ads or Google pay-per-click or YouTube ads to promote your listings, we have somebody who will do it for you. We have the online offers platform. We have probate systems. We have REO agents. We have some of the top REO agents in the business on our real estate team to take and help coach and all that, right? With all the craziness in the world today, I mean, I think we can agree probably 12 to 18 months from now, you're going to see more REO. We have coaches. We have 15 high-level coaches available weekly. They all donate two hours a week of their time. Three of them are Tom Ferry coaches. Two, one of them is a, a Club Wealth Mastermind coach. Our agents can work with them for free. They're available two hours a week. If you need help on REO, they're there. If you need help on lead generation, they're there. If you need help on listings and presentations, Joseph does that because he's the best there is at it. He's better than I am. Joseph does that. If you need help with KV Core to generate lead systems, James is there. One of my agents does about 300000 a year in GCI and flips about 10 homes. You want to learn how to add flipping into your business? We've got coaches for it. There's no phase of the business that we don't have experts in. That's all available to our agents. It's bigger than just Joseph and I. We're just small cogs in our own wheel. But we've put this kind of thing together because we know one thing. When I teach classes, I always ask agents, what's your number one need? It's always lead generation. Then they go training. Then it goes coaching. Well, guess what, guys? We have our own lead generation agency. Lead generation is not a problem. EXP does over 50 hours a week in live training. We do about 8 to 10. And then I've got 15 high-level coaches available for our business because <coughs> everything emanates from closing more transactions. You need to understand that. That's what we care about. Our business model, very simple, guys. Our goal is to help agents build listing, REO, and referral brokerages inside of the EXP umbrella so that 18 to 24 months from now, 80% of your income is derived from referral fees and 20% comes from closing real estate transactions. You take a guy like Joseph, all of his income that he takes from referral fees every month inside the eXp platform pays for all of his personal living expenses, mortgage, cars, everything, kids, everything. 
Bob, last year in 2019, I received no less, this is the minimum, no less than 19 referrals in a single month, and, and most months was far more than that. And so at the end of the day, folks, that's the kind of business we want to help people utilize. The problem, if you're at another company, this compensation structure doesn't isn't available at your company, right? So I want to preach a little bit on something that's near and dear to me. I've seen this article now probably six months ago. And I quite honestly thought it was an article where Bill Gates is going to go, hey, that whole college education thing is way overblown, right? He's done pretty well since he dropped out of Harvard. But that wasn't what it was about. It said, hey, if you want to become incredibly wealthy, however you choose to define it, then you're going to need to start a business that's capable of scaling. Otherwise, your upside is always going to be capped. There's only so many deals you can close every year, right? And your downside will always be unlimited because, well, guess what? Things happen in life. So after today, what I'd like you to, to, to let you know, the only decision I'm going to need you to make is do you want a real estate job or do you want a real estate business? It's the only decision I'm going to ask you to make. Well, here's what a real estate job feels like. If you're moving from deal to deal because that's what's paying your bills, and you're constantly worrying about, hey, where's my next deal come from? And you close that, that deal and you take the commission from it to pay off all the credit cards that you ran up the month or two before. If that's what your business and cash flow is like, you have a real estate job. Here's what business, real estate business looks like. That is me about 18 months ago. I fell a very long distance off of my roof onto a concrete slab. As you can imagine, I was severely injured. This was the first time I was able to physically, as an outpatient, go into a physical therapy unit. When I fell, I was told it would be four months before I could even consider getting out of bed. Fortunately, I was out of bed in about six hours. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I could barely eat. I had a pretty severe brain injury. I couldn't really think a lot. I was a 61-year-old paperweight. However, the first month I was in the hospital, the trauma unit, our income went up 71%. The second month I was in a physical therapy unit, learning how to walk, talk, shower, eat, move again, our income went up 44%. I didn't do a piece of work, folks. See, because here's the question. If something like that happened to you, could you work with a buyer like that? I mean, who in their right mind would want to work with you? And I promise this is way more painful than it looks in the picture. Could you go on a listing presentation like this? Who's going to want an agent coming into their house like that? That's what business income is, folks. It comes in whether you're closing deals or not. Our goal is to help you build that, right? One other cool part well, EXP has health care. So, like, if you do something stupid like me and go up on a roof in a rainstorm with nobody holding your ladder, well, you have health care. And it's actually really good health care. So that's just an aside, right? So I want you to understand that that's how it works. Well, how, how can that happen in the real estate business? Like, you say it's impossible. Well, guys, it's not impossible. So, folks, here's our objectives for all of our agents. It's very simple. We want them to close more transactions. Very simple. We want them to retain more of their commissions. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you today how you get paid. Imagine going to your broker and say, hey, would you pay me to hold my real estate license there? So anybody who's watching this or in a room that says, hey, I'm on 100% commission, A, no, you're not. B, my question is, why are you willing to work for so little money? I'm going to show you how to get paid today, right? Number three, build additional streams of cash flow. You can't get wealthy, folks, relying on just closings. We're going to show you how to do that. Now we're going to tell you how you obtain appreciating assets as part of your transactions. And then finally, how you increase your personal net worth like Joseph has. And I'm going to let him walk you through how that happens. So let's go through the money. So Joseph, walk him through it, brother. Yeah, so, you know, it, as you mentioned, Bob, comparing EXP Realty to any other real estate brokerage is comparing apples to oranges. But... To be fair, to set a baseline, let's do apples to apples, and then I'll show you we're an orange. So at eXp Realty, when an agent starts with us, it's $149 to join eXp Realty and become a quasi-owner in the company, okay? Now, 
at EXP Realty, every agent has the exact same split. It's an 80-20 with a $16,000 cap. If you're not familiar with what a cap is, it basically is a cap on how much the company would take from you. So when you cap, you go from an 80-20 to a 100% commission for the rest of your anniversary year with a flat $250 fee per deal, okay? Now, every single one of our agents pays an $85 a month tech fee, and that covers not only the technologies that we'll show you, that we offer you, but it also covers all of the expense for our EXP cloud-based office. This is how people can come and coach with us. This Earlier this week, I coached an agent from Colorado. Okay, I'm in Southern California, coach an agent in Colorado. We do this every single week. It's not a problem. And when you close a transaction with EXP Realty to show you every single cost, there's a $25 broker review fee and a $40 risk management fee, also known as E&O insurance. But even the E&O is capped at $500. So if you're doing two deals a year, you're only going to pay $80 in E&O. If you're working with us and you're closing like 200 deals a year, the most you're going to pay is $500 in E&O. But again, that's apples to apples. And before we leave this slide, I want you guys to know this. My very first year at EXP Realty, I was um, compensated 108% of my commissions. So I know it says 80-20, and that's the way it works until you cap. But that's not the only way that we generate income here. That's why we're not an apple. We're an orange. I earned 108% my very first year. And believe me, I'll never get anywhere near that low of a commission split ever again. Fair How enough? cool is that, folks? He actually got paid year one to hold his license. Yep. So here's how that works. Again, we're, we're not an apple, we're an orange. So let's dive into how that works. So at eXp Realty, when I said we have a quasi ownership uh, in our company, it's not a cute slogan. Here's how it works. Every single first transaction that you do each year, the company is going to award you shares of our publicly traded stock, stock ticker that's traded on the NASDAQ is EXPI. So every year you close your first deal, they're going to award you shares of stock. When you cap, meaning you go from 80-20 to 100%, as a congratulations, the company is going to award you more shares of stock. When you refer another agent, for example, one of the ones that's going to help you with all of this business you're generating, uh, they're going to award you more shares of stock when that agent closes their very first transaction. We also have what's called an Icon Agent Award. To be an Icon Agent at eXp Realty, you need to cap plus do another 20 deals within your same anniversary year. When you do that, if you guys will recall, the cap is $16,000. They're going to take that money you paid in, the $16,000, and they're going to give it back to you in the form of stock. And then we also have something called an Agent Equity Program. This is one of my favorites. I used to work for Century 21. Great company. I have nothing bad to say about them. But I remember I always paid the 6% royalty um, or uh, franchise fee. And I never got my math right. So I was on my little 70-30 split. But every time I ran the math, I'm like, why am I getting paid less than I think I should? It's because of the 6% franchise fee. Well, at eXp Realty, instead of paying a franchise fee because we're not a franchise, you could choose to take 5% of your commission dollars and purchase the company stock at a 10% discount. So basically, you can start building something for you and your family so when you're done with this career, you have something really amazing to show for it. But again, that's optional. You don't have to. You can do it, do it, not do it, start it, stop it whenever you want, completely your prerogative. Here, here's the thing to consider, folks. Remember I said we want you to start obtaining appreciating assets that's what this is. The other thing on the Icon Award, one other little twist to that, you can either do your cap of 80000 in GCI in 20 transactions, or if you do 500000 in GCI, so like our good friends in Southern California where they have those crazy, ridiculous prices, we've actually had somebody become an Icon agent on their first closing yep. because it was like a $20 million mansion. So there's two ways to get that. So now imagine if you're, you're a high producer and you're getting the $16,000 cap back in the form of stock. And fortunately, over our history, that stock's appreciated quite nicely. You've got appreciating assets that are leveraging your time because you're making money without doing another thing. You've already done the work. So here's how let's, let's dive into the more exciting part. Um, 
To understand the platform that we're operating from at eXp Realty, we need to go backwards and kind of look at real estate in a more general sense. So this is kind of the way money flows in real estate back in the Coldwell Banker 1908 and, and since, okay? And we know this to be true. This is the platform most of you are working with. There's either a franchise company or a company owner for a boutique brokerage. There's middle management, like your regional and your franchise owner or managing broker or your sales manager or maybe your real estate coach in the office. And at the bottom of the totem pole is the real estate agent, right? Those are the agents who have been hired to go out and sell real estate. Now, even though they're at the bottom of the totem pole, the real estate agent is the only party here that actually brings revenue to the real estate company. So let's say a managing broker sells a house. Well, in that function, they're a real estate agent. But the only time real estate companies generate revenue, it's because an agent went out there in the field, spent their money, their time, their resources, uh, and created a real estate transaction. And either through flat fees or splits, the company generated revenue, which flowed up and away from the agent, right, to pay the owners, uh, regionally franchise managing broker, and ultimately to the company owner, be it franchise or boutique. That's how real estate works. At eXp Realty, we've kind of done away from all that nonsense. And again, as our agents are quasi owners of the company, we repositioned them to start to really have more of an ownership, even when it comes to how money flows. So that's how eXp Realty has completely changed how we do things. Now, the conduit to a lot of this, Bob, if you want to move forward on that, really has to do with how we repositioned assets within the company and, and the flow of money. Now, the real conduit to all this opportunity is our cloud-based office. And when people hear that, they go, oh, I get it. You guys just don't have any offices. There's no support. Easy peasy. And I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. We absolutely do have an office. In fact, our office is far superior to any brick and mortar office that's out there. And I'm going to show you why. And that superior office has led to us agents having an ownership position in the company and participating in that revenue share that Bob mentioned. And one thing I want to add on that, folks, is first of all, eXp acts like a servicing company. Our agents are the owners, as we showed you. EXP just handles all the nonsense, and you can go out and build your own brokerage, if you will, underneath the EXP umbrella. So first and foremost, it acts as a servicing company. As far as the technology, like for the last 10 years, we've had lots of real estate companies try and make fun of us, fun of us about all the avatars and this and that. Well, guess what, guys? COVID changed everything, didn't it? And now all the real estate companies are saying, hey, we've got to look at being able to do more of that stuff digitally. And oh yeah, by the way, the company that, that runs that cloud software, we used to be their largest customer. Then about three years ago, we bought them. Well, the revenue over the last few months of COVID has gone up ridiculously. And if you watch our stock, so did the stock. We have leverage as owners, folks, that as an everyday agent, you don't. You're an employee of your own real estate business. And all this technology and how we compensate agents has changed the game for all of us. So I always crack up when I hear, oh, we got a beautiful office and whatever. And I go, great, how much do you pay for it? I go, oh, I don't pay anything. Guys, all revenue from every real estate practice, company, business, all comes and emanates from the agents, period. It doesn't work quite like that at EXP. So here's really like the main event for most agents. It's really our revenue share plan. And to keep it simple, it's basically a compensation for contribution model. And essentially, EXP Realty uh, has made it so that 50% of the revenue generated from the company goes back to our agents. So the company dollar gets redistributed back to the real estate agents because, again, we're like a quasi-owner of the company. So to keep it simple, I'll give you an idea of how it works. Let's say you knew an agent named John, and you said, hey, John, I'm at EXP Realty. My production's going through the roof. Working with Joseph and Bob, I have these new uh, implementations into my business and it's on fire. You need to check this thing out. John looks at the company, makes the move over to eXp with us, and because you referred him, when John closes a transaction, in our example here, uh, has a $10,000 gross commission, the very next month, you're going to get a direct deposit for $350. Not out of John's pocket, from the company dollar because John 
generated that revenue for the company. So every time you uh, have John that closes a deal, you're going to continue to get paid until John caps. And then you're going to have to wait for the next year until his cap resets. Why? Because once John goes to 100%, there's no more revenue coming in. When there's no more revenue coming in, there's no more revenue to share. So if you go to the next one, the real beauty of our system is that our revenue share is a cascading model. What does that mean? Let's say John and several others, because you're going to need help with all of the production. We're going to show you how to grow. But if you help John and maybe 10 other agents make that transition to eXp Realty, you can earn up to $2,800 per agent per year, right? Again, because once they cap, that's that. But if John looks around and goes, you know, I really love that revenue share thing that you're getting. I want some of that too. And John goes out and refers some agents. That's what shows up on tier two. And some of these other agents start doing that as well. They go, hey, this is an amazing company. My production's going through the roof. I'm repositioning my real estate so that I have a real estate business. When they refer agents over because they're excited about the same, on tier two, you can now earn up to $3,200 per agent annually. You'll still earn the $2,800 per agent that you personally referred in. And if you go to the next slide, Bob, this system actually cascades all the way down to seven tiers. Now, this slide can be confusing. Revenue share can be confusing. And there's a simple reason why. Our entire industry has done an amazing job of just telling you, just worry about your split. Don't worry about company dollar. Why? They're never going to give you any. At eXp Realty, you participate in company dollar. So when I show you this matrix, some people go, whoa, that's a lot of information. And we'll one-off this thing. I'm not going to spend too much time here. I just want you to understand how it works. But here's what you need to know at eXp Realty, because we've done away with all of this, now our agents, that $16,000 company dollar, that's what fuels our revenue share. That's how it works. That's how we're different. That's how we're able to do this for you. Now, to get into more of the specifics so you understand how this really works, understand this. Let's say over the next, I don't know, three weeks or three months, whatever the time frame is, you go, all right, I've got all these great things happening in my business. I'm generating listings like crazy, and I need agents to help me with my open houses. Let's say you referred 10 agents to come over and help you just with your own production. If those 10 agents are all capping agents, and again, in the real world, does everyone cap? No. But I'll tell you what, if you're helping them with business, it's not a hard thing to do. But if you refer 10 agents over to eXp Realty and they were all cappers, on your tier one alone, you will begin earning $28,000 annually in revenue share. Now, if those 10 agents, all we did is help them because they're like, hey, I want this revenue share thing too. If we help each of them just refer over two agents to eXp Realty, those agents, those 20 would be on your tier two earning up to $3,200 annually per agent, that's another $64,000 annually in revenue share. What we're showing you here is how to create a $92,000 annual residual income. And what's wild is, if you go back really quick, Bob, I just want to show everyone this, we haven't even started talking about tiers three, four, five, six, or seven. Thank you for going back. Because that'll That's just grow underneath you gradually, folks. Or yep. Not even gradually. It'll just grow. You can't stop it. At this point, Joseph can't stop his growth. Nope. Don't want to either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just, guys, I want you to understand, uh, I'm going to let Bob take over on this slide, but before we let go of that, I want you guys to understand that this is something that is, th this money that we're talking about, this is the same money that your brokerages are taking from you right now. At eXp Realty, we're un uncovering the veil because now you get to participate in it. So I just want to end on that note. Bob? So guys, remember I told you last year we paid out $485 million because our revenue was $990 million. So we were just short of a billion dollars in revenue. $485 million was paid out through this revenue share plan to 25,000 agents. Now... The reason I have this slide up here where it says 10 open house agents, one of the reasons we target listings, because, well, that's what every successful high income earning realtor does. You don't have to refer agents, guys. You have to go out and hire them. 
we'll help you hire those agents because their job is to sit those open houses so that you're not sitting there working open houses every weekend. Well, if you get 250 people in, guys, I got news for you. You can't handle that with one or two agents, so you have to hire a good number of agents. If all you did was hire 10, they're going to cap because you're putting them in front of them. Well, guys, if you're getting 20, if all we focus on is that 28,000, but you pay DXP 16, you're getting paid $12,000 a year, $1,000 a month to build a team at EXP. You're getting paid to hold your license. Then you're building personal net worth because if you want to start saving money, just throw it in a CD, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going to happen to the stock market, whatever it is, you get 3% because you can get that now. How much money would you have to put away to be able to take out $92,000 a year and never touch the principal? The answer is $3,067,000. Guys, I can tell you, I've never met in all the years in real estate an agent who has saved $3 million in cash. What's easier, hiring 10 agents to sit your open house or saving $3 million, right? If you stay with your current broker, listen, guys, you can love your broker. They can be wonderful people. You can have a pretty office. You can do all that. How long will it take you at your current pace to put $3 million bucks away? I mean, even if you could save after taxes, normal living expenses, all of it, $100,000 a year, it still take you more than 30 years. What's easier, hiring, take, going out and taking more listings and hiring agents to sit in the open houses and work with the buyers? We can help you do this, folks. We've got the tools, systems, coaching, everything, the compensation structure to help you do this because this is what I'm helping my kids do. That's my 24-year-old son. My daughter's 23 in uh, Wichita, Kansas. This is what we're helping her build. We're going to teach them to become prolific at listings so that they can go out and take 10 listings a month or at least maintain an inventory of 10 listings. They're going to go out and hire buyer's agent. My son has already hired six. They're going to work the open houses. They're going to pay him a 30% referral fee, right? They're just like they were on a team. They're on a 50-50 split, if you will. They pay him a 30% referral fee. They're closing two deals a month because he's putting them in front of hundreds of people every other week. Well, per agent, he's getting 400, he'd get $4,500 a month. And from all those agents, if you put all 10 together, if this is what you build, and he's not there yet, folks. He's a 24-year-old kid. This is what we're helping him work to. It'd be $45,000 a month just in that. He's going to close about four of his own listings, so it's about thirty grand there. And EXP is going to pay him about $2,334 every month in overrides just on that group. Is that the kind of business you want? Is that a real estate business? Here's the cool part. He can train all those buyer's agents, let them be open house agents for a year, and then he can teach them to become listing agents and go out and duplicate exactly what he does. By the time he's 30, my goal for both of my kids that have real estate licenses are to be retired when they're 30 using this system. So, Joseph, go through the EXP tools and systems for him. Yeah, and this is what's really powerful because a lot of people think, man, I want to build a big team or I want to build my own brokerage. I want to do a bunch of things. It's like, but how am I going to support agents? Well, at eXp Realty, we do that here. We have kind of the it takes a village approach. So at eXp Realty, the $85 that you pay every month, this is what it goes towards. I mean, for me, this one was it alone. Every single one of our agents gets KV Core. Now, KV Core is not exclusive to eXp Realty. You can go get it right now wherever you're at. But guess what? You're going to pay about $585 a month. So for me, the math is simple. Do I want to pay $585 for this incredible system or $85 a month? Obviously, I'd rather spend $85 a month. This is everything from your front-end website all the way to your back-end CRM, highly customizable. This thing will help you do two things incredibly well. One, maintain and solidify your uh, relationship that you have with your book of business. And two, help you build more opportunities with leads because you drive everything to this system and it helps you to automate that follow-up sequence. So that's what KV Core is. Skyslope, if we're going to help you do a lot more production, we need to help you be a lot more efficient managing your transactions. That's what Skyslope does. I love it. You put in your transaction, it auto-populates a checklist so you know every single document that you need in your file, and there's a digital signer. So I can just Make sure I got all my documentation in there. 
run it through the digital signer. When it gets signed, it comes back. It comes right back into my file. It's an amazing system. And then, of course, we also have our proprietary software, which is EXP Enterprise. This is like a CFO report for real estate agents. Every coach in the world is going to tell you you need to track your numbers. This literally does it for you. It's a single sign-on to all of our services. You can go in there and see year-to-date how many deals you've done, what your commissions have been, even what your expenses are. Oh, and by the way, all the stocks you're going to acquire and your revenue share tracked for you in real time in here as well. So you can imagine I log into this system like 50 times a day to watch my revenues continue to grow. You want to go to the next one, Bob? Now, here's the conduit to all of it. It's our cloud-based office. And I told you, our office is superior to anything else that's out there, and it is. What you can see here is we have large-scale meetings. We have over 50 hours of live training that EXP offers us alone. We have over 300 live support that are there five days a week for 11 hours a day. So if you need help with a transaction, go in there and see the transaction team. You need to talk to one of your state brokers. In California, we have five of them. So we have all of this servicing here. And guess what? It's all available on my mobile device. So I can be on my cell phone inside uh, the EXP world listening to some incredible training when I'm driving to an appointment. Next slide, if you would, Bob. Oh, and by the way, so this is the real power when I talked about building a village. Because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to build this big team. I want to be able to do all this. But how do I grow my production and then support agents at the same time? And the answer is you don't do it alone. In our cloud-based office, we have our own private team suite. And Bob mentioned the coaches and the hours there. We're going to help you do that. This is why I've coached an agent this week from Colorado. It's not someone that I personally referred to EXP Realty. But guess what? We're in there to support each other. So another agent brought on this agent. They wanted some help with their buyer's consultation, because I'm pretty good at that one too. They came in, I helped coach them, but I'm one of 15 others that are willing to do the exact same thing. You just walk in, get what you need, and the agents you invite over, they have the same access as you. This is what it looks like. Bob, you want to kind of show them through this part? Yep. This is just a, a, a team suite just for our agents. So eXp has its own cloud-based office. We have our own. This is where our coaches go. This is where we have our coaching calls. This is where we, <clears throat> excuse me, do private consultations with our agents. Um, we have something we call the Publishers Pub every Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific time. Um, it's happy hour. you got to bring your own booze. And we just go in there and hang out and collaborate. You know, we have agents who come in here and they role play, right? I could have an agent in Virginia role playing with an agent in California. So that's where Joseph was saying. Our, our collaboration, our ability to collaborate is 10 times stronger than the average real estate company. And here's something else I'd give you to consider, folks. You know, they go, oh, I really like my office. It's great camaraderie and it's all this. Guys, why do your better producers, what, what motivation do they have to share and teach you to become their competition? See, we don't have that. First of all, even if we're in your market, we get compensated through revenue share, so we're financially incentivized to share. And then we have agents all over the country. You know, some of the people Joseph coaches, most of the people Joseph's coached, they don't even, they've never met them physically yet we're able to collaborate like this, right? What's powerful, guys, because we work like that, there aren't desk fees. We can work from anywhere. The number one thing is we can cut overhead brick and mortar costs. So that money can then be paid back to the agents. We don't have expensive leases, right? And so because of that, that's how we're able to be able to support that revenue share plan and pay 50% of the revenue to the company because we don't have all the overhead of a brick and mortar company, right? We've got over 40 hours of live training each and every week in the cloud, in the EXP cloud, on everything from anything that you can think of, right? Then we have a contract with Regis. If you really want to go someplace and get out of the house and work, you can go to any Regis office anywhere in the world. So if you really feel the need for that, personally, I'll coach you. Don't even go to the Regis, although it's not a bad place. Go to a coffee shop and that I'll teach you how to use that whole online offers platform to get listings while you're sitting there having coffee or doing paperwork. Think of it this way. We have our own geek squad. You have problems. Hey, I don't understand technology. I can't get KV Core to do that. We have people in there from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. We have our own geek squad in there. We have all the marketing and branding of ever, any other company, folks. You just order it all digitally. We have something called Workplace. Personally, I think uh, Facebook is a huge distraction, but there's one thing that we have that is unbelievable. 
We have dozens and dozens of referral groups. I see so many referrals pass along every day through our workplace. That would be what I would tell you, and I would set up to get notifications. So anytime somebody needs a referral, you get it in an email so that you can see it quicker. But there's all kinds of different groups in there. So what do you do with all this information? We taught you how to do a listing presentation. We showed you how you can make more money. What do you do next? Well, basically you have three choices. Joseph, tell me if I missed one. You don't have to do anything, guys. You can go, wow, okay, I spent an hour and a half, and I think I'm happy where I'm at. Guys, you can continue to run your business as it is now. If you're happy with your production cash flow, ability to build your long-term net worth, guys, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Number two, schedule a no-obligation call. Whoever invited you to this call, invited you to this class, schedule a call. Let's analyze your current business, your lead systems, your cash flow. Let's lay what that cash flow looks like at your current company over the EXP model. Guys, if you're making more money where you're at, man, the decision is easy. Stay there. Here's what I can tell you. I've probably done in excess of 300 of those calls. I have yet to ever have somebody make less money. But if it is, well, the decision's easy. If you can make a lot more money where, you know, coming to EXP, well, you're going to have a decision. We're three guys. If you like what you've seen today, just don't mess around. Let's just join us. Reach out to whoever invited you. Get with them, and we can help you do that. Did I miss anything in those three choices, Joseph? Is there another one that I missed? No, but here's the other thing I'm going to say. Like, number one, just know when it comes to real estate production, we're proving to you that we know what we're doing. We can help you with that tremendously. Number two, when it comes to growing all the facets that eXp has to offer, just know you're talking to, with Bob Mangold, one of the top uh, agents in eXp Realty to grow teams. I'm in the top uh, one-tenth of one percent for my ability to help people grow teams. And the reason why we feel like that's important is because we didn't do it by stopping production. In fact, we grew production. That's the whole point. Number two, we don't rely on a name. You probably have no idea who I am. I'm not some kind of you know, celebrity agent or rely on you know, this social media following. There's none of that. What do we do? We work hard, just like in our real estate business. You don't need to be the, the most prolific agent ever for, to grab our systems and run with it. We can take you exactly where you're at and help you have massive growth. We can take you exactly where you're at now, even if you've never trained other agents, and help you grow a massive team because we know the systems that we can replicate. So we're excited to talk with you. And again, there's no obligation. We have this conversation. We look at all this stuff and you say, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. And guess what? We're still going to allow you to grab the listing presentation that we offered you and take it, run with it, whatever we can do to help you. So folks, just reach out to whoever invited you and just take a look, right? You owe it to yourself to be open-minded and look, right? So that's all we ask you to do. So with that, what we're going to do is Joseph and I are going to sign off. And we're going to leave you if you're in, in a room, um, whoever's in there, they can answer some of the other questions that you may have. Um, we can get calls scheduled with all of you. So we're going to sign off, let them handle the rest of the heavy lifting. So see, isn't this a beautiful thing doing this live digitally? So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hey, we're excited about what we do. We're excited about what we could help you build, but it's up to you now. So it's all in your control. Thanks so much for being here. Joseph, thanks so much for sharing your listing presentation, your expertise. Every time I listen to you, I still know that you're the baddest listing guy on the planet for this. So It was um, great to be with you guys today, too. So thank you, Bob, and thank all of you guys. So, guys, have an amazing day. Look forward to talking to you soon. Go out and sell some real estate.